guys, this is Master69 and welcome to my Days Gone Review. Booyah! Welcome back guys, this is Master69. In my new lair guys, check it out, Red Walls. I picked the colour myself, how nice is that, eh? Hey, hey! <laughs> it's a real man cave. Anyway, guys, days gone. I saw a preview for this game. I don't know how many E3s ago, guys. And you know, being a kind of Sony Entertainment production game, I was like, wow, this is going to be big, man. This is it's going to be high quality. It's going to be you know awesome storyline, awesome gameplay mechanics all that stuff and then you know many years later here we are it's been released and I have to say I'm pretty disappointed so the first thing is is the story is pretty intriguing especially at the beginning of the game it really hooked me at the beginning of the game you play a biker think San sons of anarchy your deacon um, and you've got your best friend Boozer and you, at the beginning of the game zombie apocalypse breaks out and and Deacon loses contact with his wife Sarah and the overarching story in this game is really uh, Deacon trying to find his love Sarah so Boozer is really sick and for the first part of the game Deacon's doing what he can to make sure that Boozer lives. And I found that to be a very endearing uh, story hook. I loved it. I was concerned about Boozer. I wanted my best mate to survive. And, and that was awesome. And also another hook was what happened to Sarah? Is she alive? Is she dead? There will be spoilers later on, guys. So please stop the video if, if, you, if you don't want to spoil the game for you. Um, and... Deacon obviously thinks that his wife's dead, so he's created a little memorial spot and he goes there and he reminisces about the memories that he had with his wife, how he met her. Again, another awesome game hook. So I was really pumped. I was like, this story's it's gonna get it's gonna go somewhere, it's gonna be emotional, I'm gonna be crying, it's gonna be great, all that sort of stuff. So but it did sort of fall off the cliff at the end, so which was disappointing. But it kind of had enough believable characters like Ricky, who I wish Deacon actually hooked up with, um, Iron Mike, who was a big, it was a big, broad-shouldered dude who was a camp leader and he was all idealistic, and even characters like Tucker, who was a lovely, I think she's she's a lovely elderly lady who became the leader of a camp uh, after the zombie outbreak, and then her camp's a bit of a, a slave camp, and it, I think there were themes there that could have been explored, and I was kind of hanging on there for these to be explored, like, you know, imagine the lovely lady who's a school principal, and then Armageddon happens, and she becomes like, you know, some crazy villain, and, and just exploring the journey, uh, of that character. Also, there was another intriguing character, I forgot her name, the young girl, the young girl who had a brutal, a brutal story arc throughout Days Gone. I found her storyline to be intriguing. I felt sorry for her. It was, yeah, again, there was enough chunks of meat on the bone, story-wise, to, to sort of drag me through the whole game, which, you know, which is good. Second thing is obviously being a biker themed game. It's all about bike, your bike, Deacon loves his bike, he upgrades his bike, he rides his bike, he jumps up and down with his bike. And, and that mechanic was surprisingly fun. Um, it, it, it had its flaws, but I enjoyed hooning around on these bikes, the sound of the engine, um, jumping through the air, doing mad skids in the mud, all that stuff was also really fun. Um, and the hordes, guys. The final really sort of strong point of this game is fighting the hordes. Fighting and defeating the hordes was the single most rewarding aspect of this game for me. I played it on hard mode. Uh, Deacon would encounter huge hordes of zombies or freakers who were living in, in a sawmill or whatever. And you would have to use the environment and your own uh, <laughs> your own quickness and uh, and devices to try and take out what seemed like 500 600 zombies of course a lot of times you're kiting these hordes towards you and you're 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 exploding um, you know explosive barrels and stuff to, to kill them 
Um, but nonetheless, I found it rewarding once you defeated a huge horde. I wish there was room for improvement. I wish you could move these explosive barrels around because I think if you could customize um, the environment a little bit more, then we'd be seeing a lot more videos on YouTube with you know people doing a lot of crazy stuff. So I think that was a bit of a missed opportunity as well. Um, and that's really it guys, let's get down to the bad. Right, so the bad, well guys, the combat is clunky. It's on the verge of being a little bit broken, especially uh, when you're meleeing like wolves that frustrated the crap out of me. I, I didn't want to fight another wolf. Their animations would override your animations. It was just frustrating. Very repetitive. Uh, AI was really bad. You would like kill half a camp and, and the other camp guys would just be standing around like, hey, what happened? Just really, really poor quality combat and really poor quality AI. Um, another place that sort of lacked quality was the the contextual or non-contextual dialogue. I don't mean the cutscene stuff. I mean when you walked up to a shopkeeper or walked away or bought some stuff. The things the shopkeepers would say sometimes didn't make sense in the context of what was happening. It was almost like a random sentence generator that they were using. So again, a little bit of lack of quality there. Technically guys, there was frame rate drop, drops on my PS4, especially on the motorbike when I was hooning around, so that was a little bit annoying. And again, the story in the second half really dropped off. We It started off well with Deacon looking after his mate Boozer, then Boozer like, you know, sort of kind of going through depression and you're trying to you're doing all these really heartfelt quests to try and make him feel better you're trying to find out where your wife is you're finding out about the freakers all that first half was awesome second half your wife's they didn't really give it like deacon does everything to find his wife she doesn't really care about him um he's got to like prove himself to her and do fetch quests for her and anyway sarah was a really annoying character um the villain is this just this uh cliched colonel who's a religious nut we've all been there and seen that so he was really really just non-memorable i don't care about the colonel um and the storyline just fell flat really at the end so uh, it, it was a shame. It was a shame. The crafting stuff, it's looting is all, it's okay. It's very thin. You're, you're, you're looting the same five or six objects for however many hours you're playing this game. So kind of it breaks the immersion when the when this sort of open world has only got the five or six objects the the bottle the the uh the bottle of beer uh the rag uh you know the the med kit yeah, really basic stuff. So that was pretty. Again, everything just points to a lack of quality and depth. It's I don't know if they ran out of money, ran out of time, ran out of ideas. I don't know what it is, guys, but just average everywhere. Um, again, another thing that lacked quality was the mission giving dialogue as well. That was so not the cutscenes. The cutscenes were okay. They had good good quality. The facial expressions you could kind of read what the characters were were feeling. That was great. But um, when you were getting a mission or giving a mission or whatever, that those scenes were really bad quality. It was always, Deacon always had his back to the camera and the, the mission giver who was facing you had Mass Effect Andromeda facial expressions. The world events, repetitive and jarring, to be honest. There's just a couple of them. One of them is wolves chasing you. One of them is a sniper shoots you and you really can't do much about it. So you're riding on a bike and these snipers are so good that they always hit you and you get dragged into this ambush whether you like it or you don't. Sometimes if you start driving really crazy, you can get away from it. But it seems like the developers wanted to drag you into these ambushes whether you liked it or not. So very sort of repetitive and predictable world events that you got quickly tired of as you played the game. Deacon being a biker, I thought there would be room to sort of explore his dark past. Now they sort of did touch on it with one of the villains. One of the villains was an ex-bike uh, gang member 
and obviously snitched on Deacon and Boozer. And um, before the apocalypse, Deacon and Boozer pretty much blowtorched his tattoos off him because he was a snitch. So that was awesome because that was like Deacon's dark past coming back to haunt him. Um, I just wish there was a little bit more of that um, and that could have been explored a little bit deeper. Deacon, besides that, is this white knight. He's just wonderful. Sarah, like, treats him like a doormat and he's still all loving and, um, you know, he gives up the, 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 uh, the, the biker sort of lifestyle, becomes a nomad for Sarah. He gives everything away for, for Sarah and she treats him like a doormat. So that kind of annoyed me, but maybe that's because the world had changed who Sarah was. Anyway guys, as a summary, this game is just average. It's just av every system that it presents to you is either average or a little bit flawed. There's nothing that stands out. The The story does keep you going. It's not, it, you know, even with some of the, you know, repetitive, uninspiring systems, you st I still had a fun. I still wanted to log in every night, see what happens to Deacon go you know and kill a huge horde and finish the game there wasn't enough in this game to like stop me from playing it but it wasn't a very memorable experience and and quite average all the way through so i give it three out of five human skulls thank you guys this is master 69 see you next time